So we have two mystery charts to reveal this week. First one is Sky W, and this was in the service. The uh, by the way, just just in case you're on the service and you're confused about this, I guess I should put date originally recommended. So this was originally rec recommended on the 15th. So you can see it went a long, 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 long time. This one and the AIG, which we'll take a look at in just one second, without triggering so long, in fact, that I took it off of the potential setups. Anyway, as I said a couple of weeks ago or last week, it was headed higher, but then lost some momentum and then traded sideways for a while. You can see it did make all time highs, but then came in, came back in from that and then began to sell off, creating a bow tie. If you look down below, you can see the bow tie proper order, 10 grade and 20, 20 grade and 30, 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential. As I say, we went from green or uptrend proper order to downtrend proper order where the 10 is less than 20, 20 is less than 30. Over a short period of time, yellow means that they're either uptrend or downtrend proper order. When you see it go from green to red really quickly, especially if there's no yellow in between, those are usually your best bow ties. Uh, three to four days is ideal. I'll go maybe a little bit more longer than that. And keep in mind that it's still going to be a first thrust or likely some other pattern that I trade, even though it might not be officially a bow tie. But anyway, the entry was here, and you can see it just went on and on and on and on and never did trigger. All right, the second reveal, I'm just going to go back to that just for one second. You can see, again, like I just said, it just kept going higher and higher. And I actually recommend, I didn't realize I'd recommended this uh, way back here. So, and not that it, this stock is not still in trouble. It doesn't look too pretty still, but it's no longer really uh, fitting the methodology. And the other reveal would be AIG. And let me just remind you of that. Here are your parameters down here. You can see that... Uh, they're roughly the same price, but because the volatility is a little different, the Sky W a little more volatile than the AIG, I used a slightly smaller stop on that one. So keep in mind, the stops are going to vary. If you look at this ULS, it wasn't extremely volatile and was also a lower price at the time. So we actually use a five-point stop. And that's 12% initial risk. I was reading, I'm going to be speaking about Jesse Livermore in a couple of weeks in San Francisco. And so I'm rereading everything I can get my hands on. And then I'm looking through, geez, I don't know how many it was. I remember I started a series thinking I'd take three or four weeks to do it. And three or four months later, I was still knee deep into it or neck deep into it. But anyway, uh, one of the things that I read that he said that, or at least in the biography about it, said if he was down 10%, he'd get out. The only problem with that is some of the stocks that we trade might bounce around 10% in a day. And as I've said, Ed knowledge, I mean, there's a popular methodology out there that says get out at 8% loss. Well, you know, we could take another look at NNE in a minute. Something like that would move 8% in three or four minutes. And so that would be, that would instantly knock you out. You have to be outside of that normal noise. Otherwise you'll get stopped out on noise alone. But anyway, you can see this one made kind of a triple E top look at thing, a quadruple top, depends on how you want to count that. But definitely was not making much forward progress, even though it made some new highs here and there, it just really didn't follow through to the upside. Sharp, sharp sell off, uh, not so much a bow tie on this one, kind of a sloppy bow tie, if you want to call it that, but it was a first thrust, which is also a tradable pattern. Also, look at all this overhead supply, and so far it's kind of pushing into it, which is kind of surprising to me, but so far it also has it triggered. So the pullback just kept pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. It never did trigger. So no capital was put into harm's way. As I've said before, I'll probably get an email six months from now on that one. It'll be probably at $200 a share. And they're like, what should I do? <laughs> I'm like, I, uh, I don't think I recommended that. It was going straight up. And they're like, yes, you did. Well, it never triggered. So you should have taken it. And here's ULS. And notice that it began to take off. This was an IPO. It took off and accelerated higher, then began to pull back. So these core methodology patterns can work really nicely in IPOs. And IPOs are extremely inefficient. And John, who's here tonight, John Ross, he's taken the ball and, and ran with that. And we've been kind of talking via private messages. We need to kind of expand upon that at some point in time. But uh, we hadn't quite hashed it out. But anyway, uh, the core methodology works really well in IPOs. I'll show you another little pattern I like here in just one second as, as an example. 
And the entry was right around here. Stop, stop was down here. IPT was here. We hit the IPT. And that's uh, here's my trades and what I call my model account. If I recommend 400 shares in the service, I do take that actual trade. I use a little bit of discretion here and there, but for the most part, I try to at least mimic, especially in my model account, whatever I say. And in that way, it's it's um it's my skin on the line too. And I think that makes me a better trader, not to be vain or anything. But that's why you'll see me get like really, really selective sometimes when the market's uh is kind of chopped around, like it has lately, or it doesn't quite fit the methodology. The market won't all, like last week. If if you get really bored or can't sleep, go in and watch last week's Dave Landry's The Week of Charts, where I talked a lot about uh, you can't kiss all the women because sometimes people regret that that they'll see a stock take off without them, and they're like, "Damn, I wish I could have gotten on on board." Well, if it doesn't set up for your methodology, and you should be following a fairly specific method methodology, then you should not take the trade. Now, there are some cases, and I'll show you in one second, uh, where, yes, you could buy markets that are just going straight up, but uh, there's a lot of caveats involved with that. And we'll get to that in just one second. Anyway, my buy was actually right here on this line here. I don't know why it's over there. And then we sell half at the IPT. I think it was about four points on that IPT. So that's $902. I was supposed to get a little bit more, probably four points, I would guess, or a little bit more than that. And I don't know exactly why I sold uh, a little shy of the IPT. But again, it's close enough in this particular case. And I do try to, uh, and the again was, I do try to match whatever I recommend the service as much as possible. And I did a mark to market based on today's close. And just 200 shares are left in, in the model account, of course. And that's worth 29.46, knock on wood. That's an extra 250 something to $300 from last week. So, so far so good. I expect, I don't want it. I don't hope it happens, but uh, I expect we'll have some drawdowns along the way on this, more than we've seen probably in the past because it, the volatility has picked up a little bit. And as price gets higher and higher, it's going to move around more on a point basis too. But that comes with the territory. We have a, a loose trailing stop. And yes, it always hurts in the end. And we talked about that last week at Bandcamp. But longer term trend following is where the money is. Now, again, not to keep reiterating what I beat the dead horse so much. But we get in for the swing trade and we stick around if the party continues. So here's this week's mystery chart. This is a good looking chart. I've been watching that one forever. And you can see I've got it down here. All the information you know right down here. A little tease there. <laughs> By the way, that was the that's the ULS. So 2980 in the model portfolio for a total of 3980. That's the only stock we have left. Just kind of random thoughts. Even though the market sort of tanked a while back, we're still holding on because we didn't get stopped out. And so far, the market has come back nicely. Now, will it continue to come back? I don't know. I have some concerns, and we'll get to that when we get to the live charts. But anyway, so that's a recommendation for tomorrow. Uh, today's the 29th. Uh, so this actually should have been the 29th instead of 28th here but I'm pretty close and I'll fix that. Anyway, this thing sort of gradually worked its way higher and then it began to accelerate higher very nicely. Also notice, and you can see I have a line drawn through the bars. Notice that there's some really nice persistency, meaning that the stock tends to go up day after day after day. And mathematically it's equivalent to linear regression. I just like to draw lines through charts through, the, through as many bars as I can intersect. And you can see that that's a fairly solid trend. I have a pattern called, or setup called uh, persistent pullbacks, where I think I, I think one of the rules is 20 bars of persistency, but over time, and that's 20 years ago, I guess, since I published a pattern, I've noticed that shorter and shorter term persistency is still quite useful. And I think I noticed that back 
in it might have been like 2009 or I forget exactly when, but it was a long time ago when I was in Italy and there was this big, there's a huge screen behind me. That's back when trade shows were massive. I had a, there was like 500 people in the audience, which was like, <laughs> it was a little scary. But when I was looking up at the charts to explain things, it was really cool because these bars were like three and four feet high, each bar. And I noticed that even just three or four or five of these bars that were stacking on top of each other were were relevant as far as a, a relevant technical pattern. So pay a lot of attention to persistency. And I think you're going to be very happy with that. And you are welcome. So nice little pullback here. This thing has gone so far and so fast. I'd actually like to see a little bit deeper pullback. But I feel like it's a setup right now that if I didn't take, I would be pissed. <laughs> Maybe that's, I think I reworded it a little bit more eloquently. But that's one of the million little things. It's like, if you're looking at a setup and you feel like you'd be crazy not to take it, then that's a setup that you should take. And then you kind of time travel and like this thing takes off and you're not in it. Would it really, really frustrate you because it's part of your methodology and you should have taken it? Not because it's just going up but because it's part of your methodology. Entry's there, a uh, stop is down here. Now, that's a pretty wide berth, okay? Percentage-wise, that's huge. It's probably uh, round numbers. It's probably like a 20% stop, but this stock is an HV over 100, and that's what it calls for. But it does trade fairly cleanly, even though it's got such a crazy HV. And it's a TKO type of pullback, a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a TKO, trend knockout. Anyway, IPT's up here. So we'll see what happens. And if it triggers, I'll reveal it next week. If we pull it off, I'll also reveal it. So where are we now with TFM 10% system? Well, the zones here, which is uh, the zones were inspired by Jeff. My, my original zone, so to speak, was just a 10% line. It was just a line. And anything below 10% of the 50-week closing high means that the market is likely in trouble. My premise there is just technical analysis 101. Kind of like the buy at B, which I'll mention again in a second, spoiler alert, is that if a market is go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, it's going to have to pass through B, okay? You can't just always buy at B like I often say, but in some cases you can, and I'll, I'll get to that in just one second. If you're watching a um, a trader, if you watch the methodology in action, it's a separate playlist. Go back and look at the weekly charts for 08, 29, 24, which hasn't been published yet, but it will be by the time you're seeing this on YouTube. Anyway, so Jeff said he likes to get out the way when the market is 5% or more away from the 50 week closing high. Now he's going to get a few more whipsaws, but he's also going to stay out of trouble should the market tank and keep on going now the original system just i know i've talked about a thousand times so just you guys that are here bear with me just one second uh that are always here i should say or familiar with the system but my original intent is kind of borrowing a line of reasoning from ian mcactivy or borrowing a line from ian mcactivy is you want to avoid that diaper change moment where the market just implodes and you're just like kind of freaking out and so my original intent was, okay, if we got below 10% of that 50-week closing, I get out of the way. And then I added a whipsaw filter of the 50-week closing, 50-week simple moving average. So I said I wouldn't get it all rules, and there I go. <laughs> so anyway, that's the rules. If you close 10% of more away from the 50-week closing high and below that 50-week simple moving average, then you need to get out. You can see my YouTube channel for a lot more on that, especially the Trader Quick Clips. I might even have a, a short on this, a YouTube short. Anyway, that was the last sell signal there that the NASDAQ and the Qs did not trigger a sell signal, which was kind of cool. And I'll get to that in just one second. The buy is a little bit more stringent. Uh, it's a little whipsaw filter. As I've said before, you have to be really careful with whipsaw, whipsaw filters. Whipsaw filters that keep you from going in and out. Um, a whipsaw is this big old huge saw the lumberjacks used to use. Back before Chainsaw was invented, 
And uh, but anyway, whipsaw is like in and out, in and out, in and out, just knocks you. You get in, you get knocked out. You get in, you get knocked out. Uh, it happens or shit happens, I guess. I don't. I'm not too worried about monetization. Uh, but shit happens, right? In markets, and you will get whipsawed. But the point I'm trying to get to, and believe it or not, I have one, is if you put in a lot of whipsaw filters, too many of them to try to avoid all peril and catch all trends. What'll happen is you'll end up curve fitting to the past data. And believe me, the future data does not equal the past data. If it did, you probably would never see my fat ass again, but everybody else would figure that out too. Then the, the edge would come out and there would no longer be a market. So that's why, that's one of the things that's kind of hard to wrap your head around. But the reason the, reason the market is a market is because markets are imperfect and people are imperfect. And emotions run rampant in markets, both as crowd behavior and individual behavior, and that's what makes a market. But anyway, you want to make things as simple as possible, and that's a point I'll get to again in a second. So you want two bars of Landry light, which is um, reminiscent of the 220 EMA breakout system which i now call the 230 ema breakout system because i like the 30 ema better than the 20 as i've said quite often in more recent years but anyway two bars of landry light that means the lows are greater than the moving average in this case moving average is 50 week simple moving average i like a simple moving average for this i actually it's kind of hard to wrap your head around but you actually want a little lag in a longer term trend following system because if it catches up the price too fast you're likely to get knocked out now longer term trend following systems have have their nuances and have the, and, and a lot of them weren't that good okay that's that's where the money is and that's where we make all of our money and or most of it i should say but the drawdowns can be brutal, and that's why we're taking partial profits along the way. Now, I didn't build profits taking into this. I probably should have in hindsight, as you'll see here in just one second. But anyway, the sell signal is less stringent. My thinking is get out the way, sell first, and ask questions later. And we're way up here towards the top of the range. When you look at the weekly chart, it kind of helps you to get that 30,000-foot view. But uh, you still have to get to new highs and stay there, I, ideally. Anyway, so the buy was back there, two bars of Landry lights, and any close above the 10% line or the 10% zone, as we now call it. Now, if you take a look at the NASDAQ, it's kind of shocking. And believe me, it was, it was much higher than this. But uh, I was looking at my brokerage account, and I saw it, it said, 50 something percent i'm like no there's no way i'm up that much on this position uh cues that is but uh i am i i and this is like a i'm not bragging i, just, I got in sort of like for s and g's like okay let's see if i could follow a mechanical system i'm more of a discretionary guy and i have a lot of money management built into things but this has no money management this is just a pure trend following system it's going to have drawdowns obviously but the drawdowns aren't horrible because you're, you're stopped at a 10%, but 10% can be once, obviously you get to 500, you get in at 300, that could be substantial. Like I said last week, that's an $8,000 haircut, at least a couple of weeks ago it was. But so far, I'm up 176.67. And again, it was, it was much prettier than that, not that long ago. By the way, you have to close below the 50 week simple moving average and 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high. Those are the two caveats. But the system was designed around a calendar week. So that would have to happen on a Friday. You'd have to close out the week. So I could see where there could be a potential for the market to have a significantly bigger than 10% move and below that 50 week moving average. But I'm going to follow it like it was designed years ago. I'm not going to change the system once I'm in it, and we just want to see what we'll just see what happens here. And knock on wood, it's been a pretty good run for now. But the stop is way down here. It looks like 426, and you know we were up over 500. Like I said a minute ago, that's an $8,000 swing, and that's gotten a little bit better. That moving average is coming up a couple of points each week. 
and ideally it'd be great if that moving average got above the 10 percent line so it wouldn't be as much of a heartache and headache when it does eventually stop out and as i've said quite a bit when i bought 100 shares it was kind of like an s and g trade i just thought it'd be kind of fun to see what would happen and then once it went up 100 points or whatever it went up 50 something percent then all of a sudden it, it started becoming real money pretty quickly all right let me just shift gears here i want to do a brief uh, some couple of thoughts on the landry 100 it kind of dovetails in with something i'm read and reread by livermore recently and this is, um, I did a, a Kindle search, and it's several times he's mentioned this throughout the book. He was talking about one stock that was at brand new highs, and people wouldn't go near it, but it didn't seem to bother him. At 164, prices look mighty high, but as I've told you before, stocks are never too high to buy or too low to sell. The price per se has nothing to do with establishing my line of least resistance. Well, as I've mentioned before, I rebooted the Landry 100, and the Landry 100 is just, uh, sort of a proof of concept type of thing, and I don't have real money on the line. Maybe someday, maybe I have to retire or something, or I, I never see myself retire, but partially retire. I was kind of thinking about it today. It's like uh, I'd have like a workshop, and then I'd have, I'd have monitors on one side of the workshop. Uh, I don't know why I don't do that now. Uh, I guess there's too much other stuff going on. But anyway, uh, it's kind of like a proof of concept type of thing where you you have a slot for 100 stocks, okay? And I'll grab the formula for you next week. It's about that big. That's a whole formula. It's just, a, it has to be making a 52-week closing high. Now, I do remember last time I ran this, so to speak, when conditions were a little bit less conducive for like as far as like a bull market is concerned or a bull run i did just kind of go to i'd go down from 52 week to to maybe as low as 90 day highs for the stocks to be a candidate for the list but it's pretty amazing and this one's had a pretty big drawdown that comes with the territory one thing i was thinking about is earlier today is that I don't have any money management in this other than I go through it every night and decide who's going to get kicked out and who's going to get replaced, uh, who's going to replace the ones that were kicked out. And in some cases, if there's so many great stocks, they'll put, I'll just keep putting new stocks in and just kicking out, in some cases, even winners. But I figured let's hang on to this ASTS for now. Let's see if it can survive this little drawdown in here. And I will, I'm not going to throw caution to win. I'll, I'll eventually pull it out. And this is just, again, for S&Gs. But it's up over 200%. I think it was like 250% or more, maybe even much more, maybe 300% at the highs. And it's since pulled back. But the point I want to make, like Livermore said, you look at this stock and back at $9 whenever it triggered, that's a pretty high level. That was at least one year plus highs for the stocks it wasn't all-time highs but it was one year plus highs and you can see from there to where we are now that's the 214 percent round numbers run so a stock is never too high to buy now there's some caveats i like a pullback don't get me wrong but for proof of concept as far as momentum goes if you were to buy 100 stocks, and if your caveat was the stock had to make a new high for you to buy it, new closing high, then I think you would do okay longer term because you would you would occasionally catch this 200 and something percent move, a 300 percent move, or a thousand percent move in some stocks. Now you can't just run out and buy new highs. I don't want to make it look like you can run out and buy new highs. This is to prove a concept. The problem with just buying new highs is you'd end up with like, let's say a half a dozen stocks in your portfolio. Well, that's that's not enough to ensure you're gonna capture that trend. I think you're better off trading something like a pullback. Uh, by the way, this stock is set up as a pullback, but it's 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 pretty crazy. <laughs> so uh, consider yourself warned should you try to go after it. But if you look at some of the other numbers in here, they're decent, okay? And, and if you look at the tracking date too, 
you can see this was on 6-6-24, okay, just a couple of months ago. In fact, I started this, I guess, back in May is when I started my reboot on this, late May, if, if memory serves. Because the oldest one I see, now this is not all 100, but the oldest one I see in the list looks like it's May 29th, but you can see the tracking date in here. And, you know, CDNA, 64% since uh, July 22nd. And uh, if you, yeah, if you want a copy of this list, I could, I occasionally post it to my Facebook group, but I'll, I'll tweet it out tomorrow, first chance, if you want to take a look at these on your own. But you can see that's a tracking date here, and that's a percentage gain. And these are the top percentage, percentage ones. If I reverse this list, which I could certainly do and get the live charts, you'll see that there are some losses, but I do kick out the losers as they go. So this is a, a survivor's database, so to speak, okay? So you're going to see the better looking stocks in here. Like I said, a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago when I first rebooted this, is that I'm doing a sort of a constant window dressing when it comes to this list. And, and again, I spent a lot of time on this a few months ago. So check that out if you can't sleep at night. And stealing a line from my buddy Greg Morris, uh, don't operate heavy machinery after viewing.